Okay guys, this is part three of a seminar at Cabela's in Tulalip, Washington. We're talking about Dick Knight Spoons, how to rig them, the action you want to achieve, and how to be successful. So stick around for some great information. If you troll at the correct speed, your lure will wobble properly and you'll stay at the correct depth that you're fishing. So you've got to really dial in your speed just right so you're just across the bottom if you're fishing a cannonball or pulling that diver that it's hitting the correct depth but the lure is wobbling. If you're, pull, if you're trolling too fast, at some point that diver just won't make your rod tip wiggle anymore. If the rod tip's not wiggling, you're not fishing effectively. All right, I want to flip over and I want you guys to see this video here. Okay guys, this is a 50-50 Dick Knight, it's a size one. This lure is at normal speed and that's what it looks like. Now we're gonna slow it down here in slow motion. That is what a Dick Knight spoon is supposed to look like. And isn't it interesting that the hook is up? It's not by accident, guys, it's by design. So when you get a Dick Knight spoon, don't be messing with it, don't be changing the hooks, leave the hooks alone, don't add snap swivels, leave them alone. Tie to what comes out of the package. If it has the ring, like on this number one Nickelback Frog, tie to the ring. If you buy a size two and it's got that bar the barrel swivel on it, tie to the barrel swivel. If you take the barrel swivel off and want to tie directly to the ring, that's fine. I've seen guys do that and that's okay, but you don't want to add, you don't want to tie a snap at the end of your leader and then tie into your Dick Knight. You're going to kill the action and it's not going to work, okay? So a lot of guys ask me about scent and I use scent on my spoons. I use scent on everything. But this, last year and this year, this is the scent I'm using. When you put scent on, literally it's a drop on your index finger, smear it on your thumb, and then put it onto the spoon. And then when you're done, grab that hook and run your finger right up the leader line about 12 inches. That scent is more amazing than you think. The two scents that I'm using are the shad gel and the salmon gel, and they work. Okay, I'm not going to tell you because I'm on Dick's Pro Staff. I'm telling you because I have to put my clients into fish. Okay, I'm not out there selling them lures and tackle and everything. I'm putting them into fish. I want them to have a fish experience. I use stuff that works. And for some of you that have seen me speak for a long time, you'll notice that many of my Pro Staff things that I have with the same companies because I believe in their products. This stuff works, you gotta try it. And I like, what I like most about it, it's not a single type of scent, it's a mix, okay? It's a mix, shrimp and krill, it's a mix, and I like that. So Dick Knight Spoons have been around since the 40s, and they've been helping anglers of all ages catch fish. They have three sizes, zeros, which most commonly here in the Northwest, we re refer to them as wees. They have the number one and then the number two. I fish the number one for coho salmon most predominantly, but I will use the wheeze as well, okay? Once again, and I can't stress this enough, tie your leader to what comes out of the package, okay? That's gonna work for you. In each size, there's 85 colors. Dick, is it still 85? 85 colors. You guys are going to be hard pressed to find a lure with the right, with that many colors, okay? They now have UV, and I'm telling you guys, UV is the ticket. It works. It works well. So don't be afraid to pick up one that says UV on it, okay? The 5050s don't have UV on them, but with a metal finish like that, they have a lot of flash to them. Oregon State record shad, 6.6 .6 pounds on a Dick Knight spoon. 2001 peak salmon, 14.49. That was Bob Hammond was the guide that put that client into that fish. And they've been responsible for some, for some derby fish and definitely some big weighted fish over the years, okay? 
So they do work. And normally when I talk to people that say, I'm frustrated with the lure, it's because they don't understand that wobbling action. You achieve the action, you're fishing the spoon the way it was intended to be fished. Now you can get into fish, all right? They have some other products, including Lure Coat. If you guys like to build your own stuff, you want to paint stuff up, they've got some other products, including the DNA, the Dick Knight Attractant that I showed you. It's the scent I'm using. And like I said, last year and this year, sat the Shad and the Salmon. Those are the two flavors I'm using. And now they have uh, Kokanee Dodgers. Interesting story about Kokanee Dodgers. I know someone who was fishing the river the other day it took a dodger and put another inline presentation behind it, a kokanee dodger, and put coho on. So these dodgers may not just be for kokanee, okay? Something to consider. Play around when you're out there fishing. You might find something that's very helpful for you. So I've got some cards. Uh, I've got business cards and rat cards. You guys, we have a lot of videos that are on the internet, okay? They're free. Uh, like Jim said, we did videos on how to set this stuff up with Dick Knight and I've got other seminars on there so feel free to follow us and uh, check out our videos so what do we have for questions yes sir the shelf life on the scent as long as you don't leave it in your boat and let it cook if you put it in your fridge it's good until you're until you run out but on scent guys if you are the kind of person that puts scent in your tackle box or in your boat, and that's where it sits, you need to buy new scent every year, for sure. Because it starts separating. It's, it's true with all scents. Yes, sir. Drift fishing dick nights from the bank, what size of weight am I gonna use? The answer is simple. There is no clear cut answer. It depends on where you're fishing. It depends on how deep the water is where you're trying to fish. I'm gonna throw an example to you guys. If you're fishing a hole and it's 13 feet deep and you're casting up and you're not getting down to the bottom quick enough to actually fish the hole, you're skipping the hole, you need to up your weight a little bit. It's not that you need to cast higher, you need to increase your weight to get down faster. But with that said, you're now going to have to put more input in the reel to maintain the Dick Knight action. Okay? Yes, sir. No, sir. Don't do that. You want to tie directly to it. Every one of these Dick Knights I have tied up here, it's tied directly to the Dick Knight. I have been on the river. I've seen guys casting, I've caught fish right in front of them. And I've had guys go, I've been fishing here all day, I can't hook a fish. I go, what are you using? Well, I'm using Dick Knights. And I go, hold it up. And I've had them hold it up and they have a size seven snap swivel hooked right into that Dick Knight. And I said, listen buddy, pull that thing off, tie right to the lure and do what you've been doing and, hit, and boom, fish on. It's killing the action, killing the action. Yes, sir. Okay. For drift fishing, I'm only going to use spinning. I use, for all my drift fishing, my side drifting, free drifting, uh, twitching jigs, casting retrieving plugs, I use G. Loomis 1141s. It's an ultra light, slow action rod. I use it for other things. I, because I do free drifting, like for steelhead, we cast eggs. You use a fast action rod, you throw them off. You don't want to use a bait caster for it because you're just not going to get the distance that you need to get without getting an overrun bird's nest. But if you're going to troll these guys right here or you're going to troll uh, lead, you can use a bait caster if you want. This was just really fast and easy to set up. But with that said, I can troll this just like this with this rod. Okay, and on that I use a medium action bait caster rod. Okay? Yes, sir. What about fishing across the 
fishing across an eddy. You know, it's it's tougher when you're casting. You know, you, you talking about currents coming at you and you cast up into it, or are you just talking about some froggy water? Uh, yeah. uh, I'm up here on the stilly. You're up on the stilly. Just above the dam. You're just above the dam. Yeah, that's I kind of frog water. It's not going anywhere. It's swirling around. Something like that. You have to do cast and retrieve. You're going to use a standard drift fishing setup and you're going to cast in and you're going to retrieve it towards you. That's the only effective way to fish that. You put that down there and let it sit, you're going to reel up a ball of line. Okay? It'll be a mess. Okay? Any other questions? Guys, I'll be up here a few more minutes. I, I do want you to know, um, this is the first time Dick has actually showed up to one of my seminars. He's seen them before, uh, but it's the first time he showed up. And I appreciate him. And I'm going to tell you why. Because Dick Knight is made right here in the USA. The whole freaking thing. Huh? Thank you guys for coming. I'll be here for a few minutes if you have any questions. Okay guys, that wraps it up for this seminar. Dick Knight Spoons have been helping anglers of all ages get into fish since the 1940s. Dick Knight Spoons are a staple in the Northwest. Take this information and get on the water and work on fishing the spoon effectively. Once you achieve that effective wobble of the spoon, you're going to be getting into fish. Thanks for watching. Dick Knight Spoons, helping anglers of all ages catch fish since the 1940s. Vision, hooks and tackle. Find them at your local tackle retailer. Iserline, catch what you've been missing.